Okay, it's been a while since I did some work on the Polaris. Decided to work on it today. Um, just finished giving it a new paint job. Ha ha ha. I actually, just kidding. The um, thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to put on the uh, rear mechanical brake system. I had taken it apart and uh, not reinstalled it since I had put it all back together. The uh, pads were bad. And um, actually, I think the pads probably still had some meat on them, but I accidentally lost one of the two pads, so I figured I'd just pick up new pads for it. And the other reason I didn't bother doing anything with that was because the rear brake cable was seized. I tried uh, a number of different things to try and break it free, and nothing worked. So I priced new brake cable. It's prohibitively expensive, so I wasn't going to bother. And then I uh, snagged one on eBay for the right price. So today I'm going to put the mechanical brake assembly with the new pads back on there and a new cable on there. And the first step to doing that to make life very easy is to remove this rear wheel. Next step is to remove these two 8 millimeter hex head, um, internal hex head cap screws. And if you don't have an 8 millimeter drive like this one, uh, you can get by with an Allen wrench if they're not too too seized up. I'm assuming that's, you know, if you're taking it off of the bike for the first time, it might be seized up. But uh, these weren't too bad. So anyways, I'm going to uh, remove these two bolts, and that actually uh, allows this to go into two halves, which makes it really easy to install the new pad. If you're taking this apart for the first time, be wary that, uh, be aware that if this pad falls out, this small piece right here could fall out and this piece is um, not something you want to lose and if you're putting it back together and you can't remember how it goes in the flat side actually faces the pad the rounded side faces in towards the cam mechanism uh, which is basically just this lever as this lever pulls it cams this out and applies pressure and at what point that starts to happen is regulated by where this adjusting bolt is adjusted to this outer nut right here I've got my finger on is a locking nut to lock it in place once you've adjusted it. I've got it rotated all the way out, very far out, because that makes it a lot easier. Uh, it made it a lot easier for me during this assembly. So anyways, so what I'm going to do now is I've got my uh, pads I picked up on eBay, brand new genuine Arctic Cat pads. Uh, the seller accepted a price of 8 bucks on them. So happy with that and uh, I'm gonna put just a small dab of grease on this rounded area right here where it's going to uh, engage that cammed area there and I'm gonna be careful to make sure I don't get any grease on the pads when I unpack these pads I notice that there's actually a difference between one pad and the other this pad has a little metal plate bonded to it and this pad does not I'm going to place the pad that does not have the plate bonded to it on this side of the caliper that's fully supported. I'm going to place this pad that has the metal plate bonded to it on this side here where the pressure is being concentrated by this little piece right here as it pushes out. It would make sense to me that that's why they have that on there. If I were to put this pad here, this pad might want to crack. So that's just going to go in there like that and then I'm going to sandwich the whole thing together and place it onto the uh, the actual um, disc and bolt it back on. I was just uh, in the process of tightening this caliper up and I noticed that uh, this little clevis pin actually goes in from the back side and when this is tightened up what happens is it's kind of hard to get this out because it interferes with this part of the metal frame here on the uh, rear axle assembly. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out now and attach the brake cable to it before I tighten this all up. And this is my new brake cable that I got in. Got it off of eBay. This was a real deal because the um, best price I found online was over $60 for this cable which is a complete ripoff because it's only about a 18-inch uh, cable, but that's the way it is. And I got this one for 10 bucks, plus about another 10 shipping, which might have been a little bit of an over overpayment for the shipping, but uh, since it came in, uh, I think it 
came in priority mail. Anyways, uh, don't care about that because for a total investment of 20 bucks, I get a brand new OEM Arctic Cat cable. So I'm going to install the cable before I uh, tighten this all back up. And the way I want to do that is I want to actually install it at the front here. This little part right here engages there, so you have to basically put it in this way and then rotate it back and then get those nuts in position. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, this doesn't want to uh, fit down in here at that point, but it fits down right there. So what you want to do is you want to want to do is I back the nut all the way off so it's just laying there freely and then uh, get this cable engaged here. This is real easy to do with one uh, with two hands but I'm holding the camera try and show you just flip this back there we go and then Routed. Pull this back, slide it down in there, slide forward. Now I'm going to put the nuts nut back on. Just put it on that far for now, I'll worry about adjustment in a minute. And then you want to make sure you slide this little rubber keeper. That keeps water from migrating along the cable and dirt and stuff getting in there. All right, so that's just temporarily installed. And now I can come back to back here. And the deal back here is that this cable should, this part right here, should engage in this. I'm not mistaken and then uh, this of course is held on by the clevis pin to there okay this engages just like that and th the cable will slide through that little slot this one's a little bent but still the cable will slide through that little slot so you pull the sheathing back get the cable in and then bring this back up like that and slide this little again this little rubber cap pops over well, again easy to do with two hands free clevis pin is now in I put the cotter pin in a new cotter pin in to hold that on and then uh, tighten these bolts back up that bring the caliper into two halves and then also while you tighten it you're going to make sure that the uh, pad doesn't fall out of its position because then you'll have a real hard time in tightening it and if you don't realize it and you try and over tighten it you're going to break in your pad. Just another quick reminder you want to make sure that this adjustment is out as far as possible. I actually uh, thought I had it out quite a bit and then realized as I was tightening up the uh, caliper that the brakes were already starting to drag so um, I ended up having to back this off even further so uh, it just goes to show you what a difference there is from the thickness of the uh, pads that I had in there that I had taken out compared to the new pads I'm noticing a small issue here which is uh, this part here in the clevis actually it wants to back out too far this way when the when the brake cables uh, when the brake lever is up and I've got this adjusted as far well pretty much almost as far as I can forward so what's happening is every once in a while that cable might want to catch on this part right here where my finger is instead of where it's supposed to and I think the reason for that is I noticed that this little uh, piece of metal off the bracket here that actually retains this is bent this way and at first I thought maybe it was supposed to be like that but now that I'm having this problem with the alignment I'm thinking that this actually got whacked at some point by something 
and is bent back and as a matter of fact I can kind of see it's got a bend to it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the tension off the cable so I can remove the cable from this bracket and carefully try and bend this back without breaking it well I bent that bracket back slightly so it's more uh, more or less at almost a 90 degree angle to this face right here and I don't want to bend it any further back than that and I'm still kind of perplexed as to why it seems like this cable is almost like it's too long even though it's an exact replacement the uh, this first little ridge right here is, is clearly for this little rubber end cap to snap onto and then there's a second one there that almost looks like maybe a clip would go in there and hold that onto this into position here and the problem that I'm seeing is that with it in that rest position this little uh, puller part right here on the end of the cable I would expect it to be instead of where it is right now I would expect it to be more like that now this arm can't go back any further it's at the fully retracted position so that's not the answer I mean it's pretty close but it almost seems like it should be like that which is about a quarter of an inch difference now moving this adjustment here is not going to make a difference because if I move it any further up that way you can see it's already almost all the way at the end if I move it any further up that way all that's going to do is want to pull this cable out of its out of here some more like that which I guess that's possible that that's what's supposed to be going on here but I'm just not sure I'm gonna actually go back and look at my video from when I disassembled it and see if I can uh, see if I'm missing something here well before I decided to go back and look at the video just for the heck of it I decided to move this adjustment to see what would happen and actually counterintuitive to what I thought would happen I thought it would get worse but it actually it actually corrected the problem so uh, I guess I just uh, kind of was thinking backwards anyways uh, now with it in this position the uh, pedal all the way up you can see that this is now sitting where it should be sitting with this arm fully retracted and as I push down on the pedal and I release it it comes back to where it should be the only thing it's not doing is it's not coming back as smoothly as I'd like but I'm gonna blame that on this spring so I'm gonna change this spring because this spring is pretty rusted and I think it's just lost its lust for life and I think that is uh, where my problem lies right now is that this this return spring is is uh, is weak and then the only other uh, thing that I'm looking at here is I still think that it that there there should be a clip that might slip into this if you could see it but there's a second notch right there that'd be the ideal spot to slip a clip to clip this and keep this retained in there although with this being kind of bent up I don't know whether or not I'd even be able to get it to, to seat properly and it doesn't look like it's gonna fall out because I mean it really can't it would have to pull all the way out I mean I think it could just stay like that and be perfectly fine and when I activate the brake it doesn't move so unless this gets snagged on a stick or something it gets pulled out so for now I'm going to put this little cover back in its final position and then the only thing that's going to be left to do is to uh, test drive it and adjust the brake and then the only other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure that with that adjusted the way it is whether or not I can actually push the brake pedal down far enough to set the parking brake which uh, parking brake doesn't seem to want to clip in oh there we go okay I guess I wasn't engaging it far enough over so there's the parking brake feels like it's engaged quite well so all right
and then to release the parking brake, you push down and pop that back. All right, so I guess I'll uh, put that little rubber cap back in position and put the wheel back on.